Okay, so let's get straight to the point. I just destroyed this $4,000 lens. And it's making me question everything. Okay, so here is the story. I, this was just a couple days ago. I was finishing an engagement shoot downtown Toronto. And I, we were, I was saying goodbye to the couple. And as I was saying goodbye, I could feel something like on my leg. And I was like, wait, what? And it was one of those moments where uh, you're so sure something else is happening, but then something else is happening. <laughs> so I was like, I was confused because it felt like my lens, my camera was dropping, but I knew that wasn't like possible. The only problem, <laughs> uh, the only problem was that it, it was happening. My camera, okay, hold on. My camera is held on to my belt loop. Let me get it. So, so it's held on with one of these Peak Design belt loop things and then the camera slides on and is, it kind of holds on to your leg and belt through this little thing right here. This has been very trustworthy for me, I suppose. I haven't had, I've never had any issues with it, except for this day, where this little loop, anyways, there's a little loop that loops around your belt and you're supposed to tighten it. Well, <laughs> I am pretty um, obsessive about making sure that this thing is tightened really tight so that my camera doesn't fall off and hit the ground. So I was talking to the couple, your photos are going to, your film is going to take this long to process, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, with all the horror, my contacts is falling to the ground and I try to break its fall. I try, I try to grab it before it does. And I just, I just catch it in time to where the whole thing isn't demolished, but it demolished the lens. So I think if I didn't catch it, I, the whole thing would have just been in pieces, but I, man I managed to save that much right here, right? So this side is lower and this side is higher. A few things ran through my head. <laughs> First of all, I wanted to cry, <laughs> but I just like held it together and the client was still there. Like I, I dropped it, I picked it up and I just tried to like collect my thoughts. Like, okay, oh, it's fine. The gear's fine. Put it away, everything. Say goodbye. Try to make it a really good experience at the end of the shoot and then go around the corner and hide and cradle my poor camera. <laughs> after I wiped the tears, I didn't really cry. But after I did feel very overwhelmed though because I, it's not like I can just like, oh, it's an easy thing to just like buy another $4,000 lens. Um, so my first thought is like, this sucks. What am I going to do? Um, so the first thing that came to mind was like, oh, well, I send my contacts to this place in New York to get them serviced every so often. And I was like, OK, no problem. I can send it to them and see what happens. I can get it fixed. Oh, and I have camera insurance. So <laughs> this is very important. If you have any type of gear, uh, any amount of gear more than just one camera and you are using it regularly, if you have any type of business and you're relying on your cameras, get camera insurance like it is like one of those expenses that it doesn't feel great to do it because you're like i'm suspending like a few hundred dollars a year and like you don't see benefit from that necessarily but now i see the benefit of it but my insurance looks like it will cover it so that is oh, a relief now the third thought that came into my mind and just keep this between you and I, don't tell anyone else, is why am I shooting with this massive, incredibly expensive, fragile film camera? Which, to be fair, some of you have commented on that uh, on my like Contact 645 review that I did a few years ago. Like, oh, it's like, why are you using this old camera? 
So I went through that process and I was like, what am I doing with my life? Like now I was like, okay, Luke, you're just saying, you're just thinking silly thoughts. Give yourself a few moments and just like give yourself a day so you can think about it and process everything. And so I messaged, actually, no, I called my repair place and I was like, hey, I'm looking to sending over my camera. I just want to double check that you repair contact 645 lenses. And there was just a slight silence on the phone. And then he said, ah, oh, I'm sorry, but you can't, as of about a month ago, you can't get parts for it anymore. And so we no longer repair these lenses. Wait, what? <laughs> so this created a conundrum uh, where... I can't get this lens fixed like it needs to be just like fully replaced where I either I can just like just eat the cost and just like buy a new lens or I can put a claim through insurance uh, to cover the lens. However, when you do that, your premiums do go up for equipment insurance. So I would be paying more every year if I do put a claim in. So it's all of these like things to think through. And then I'm like, well, why am I even shooting film? Like, why, why don't I just keep it more simple to digital cameras? And then I'm not concerned about these like old cameras that I can't get fixed if I break them. So these are all the current thoughts that are running through my mind. Now, once I did give it a day and I like took a little break, I went to sleep. I woke up the next morning. I was like, OK, I am still dedicated to the shooting film part. Um, but, but I have, it has made me second guess the type of camera that I use. The reality is that there are so many wedding photographers that do use this camera. It is such a popular camera and there, the, the reality is, is there aren't that many of them left. Uh, they don't make them anymore. They stopped making them quite a long time ago because it's being so used with wedding photographers. Uh, there's just less and less parts because you use it, you're going to break it eventually, you're going to need to get it repaired. And so there's no more parts available. Uh, really, the only thing you can do now is just like source parts from other broken pieces um, or something like that. I don't understand the whole repair world that much. So the only good thing that has happened out of this process, and this is something that Ali told me like right away, and it's been true over the years as running my own business, I have found that sometimes the worst things and sometimes the most unfortunate circumstances can bring about some really good things in your life. And I don't think I would have ever considered selling these and looking into different type of film equipment um, if it wasn't for this. Um, so I know this is a little bit of a different video than I normally make, but I thought it would be really interesting to share on my channel because it looks like this is going to be a bit of a recurring video in terms of finding kind of a new solution and a new uh, a new way of shooting film with weddings because I just it doesn't seem to justify <laughs> justify by like like using these, especially when so okay. Ideal scenario is that my insurance will cover uh, this lens and they will send me a check for a full like reimbursement of the lens. Now, if that happens and I have four thousand dollars sitting in my bank account. Will I go and buy this lens again? And this is a great question to ask yourself. Uh, for things in your life. I've asked myself this question in different ways in my business. Like if I didn't have it and I had just the money, would I buy it again? Right. That's a great way to kind of like look in at your own situation when you're not sure what to do about something or if you feel like you need to shake something up in your life. Um, so when I think about like I have two bodies and two lenses and I, I'm sure that oh, five, 10, 15, I'm sure that's like $15,000 worth of gear. Maybe a little less than that. That's a little extreme. Maybe maybe twelve thousand. If I had eleven, twelve thousand dollars, would I go out and buy these two contacts bodies, or or would I look 
into different options out there? Would I look into Hasselblad's, Mamiya's? Like, would I look into medium format? Would I look into 35 millimeter? Ah! Would I like look into the Nikon film world and like the all those F lenses that I could use? So uh, there's a lot of thoughts running through my mind. And to be honest, they're pretty exciting thoughts. Uh, it's pretty exciting to kind of like dive back in the world of film photography and into like in the version of equipment and be like, OK, if I did sell all of my contacts gear. Like, what would I buy? Would I buy it again with the money that I had or would I look out, test some different options and see what would actually work better within my wedding, you know, photography workflow? So. Those are all my thoughts, and I thought I would just share them with you. I would love if you're like, I would love to hear what you think about this. Like, should I should I just like replace the lens and like go back, like stick to the medium format contacts route, like keep doing what I'm doing? Or should I change it up? Like, would that just be like a bad? Is it going to be like a bad decision that I'm going to sell this gear and then come back in like a year and be like, what have I done? I need to, I need to buy the contacts again. Or is it time to move on? Is it time to try a different system um, for my wedding photography gear? I don't know. 